Hi, can I order please? You have to order from the kiosk. Since you're here, can I order with you? No, you have to order from the kiosk. Okay, thank you. This is what it's like to be a consumer in today's world. I order lunch from a machine and collect my own food. I select, purchase and pour my own tipple. And I even bag my own groceries. So, if I'm doing all the work, then who's really being served? The introduction of self-service machines was part of Singapore's productivity push in the 1980s. Standard Chartered Bank brought in Singapore's first ATM machine back in 1980. But it was only in the last decade that things really picked up speed. In 2011, supermarkets introduced self-service checkouts. 2014, Changi Airport began automated check-ins. That same year, government agencies also started using virtual customer service offices. By 2016, about a thousand F&B outlets have adopted some form of self-service technology. And the do-it-yourself wave gave way to the rise of unmanned stores. From a convenience store pilot in 2017 to this local telco's offering this year, which allows you to replace a faulty SIM card or recontract your phone, all without a single staff present. This is Andrew Tay, and this is what he spent the last five years developing. Helping companies integrate software throughout their entire store operations. It's earned him more than a million dollars doing so. Clearly, companies are installing these machines. Why? Um, basically, the main reason why companies are taking on this is the labour crunch. What do companies actually gain from streamlining this process? We've seen an increase of 20% revenue, um, especially during peak hours, meal times, when such solutions are implemented. Because the ordering process becomes faster, um, the churn becomes faster. If you want, we can show you another outlet uh, that actually makes the ordering process a lot more efficient for the customers. A yes. lot more efficient? Yes, this way. Wow, okay. So, Diana, you see at this tea shop, there's actually a queue right now, uh, but you're able to scan this QR code and make the order on your phone. So with this, you're able to customise your drinks and not have to speak to the cashier. And then you're able to make payment on the mobile as well. This is a critical question for me. When my order is sent in, does that mean that I'm jumping queue ahead of these guys? Yes, you are. Yes! I like that, I like that. So far, I'm liking the convenience and efficiency. But I want to know how other consumers feel about these developments in self-service. Right now, we have self-kiosks available. I think it's more efficient when it comes to, especially from F&B outlets. Just delay my time choosing the food. You see, I have to click and after that, yeah, I prefer to communicate with the, the waiter. For hospital appointments and also banking uh, services, it's, it allows us to do everything that in within five minutes. What I don't like is the Ask Jamie. Uh, in our government websites. When you ask a specific question, you don't get an answer you want. There are clearly many different opinions about automation in the service industry, but I'm still not convinced that consumers are really benefiting. So I'm going to do a social experiment with the help of two friends. 28-year-old Charlotte Chang enjoys using self-service. From the comfort of her room, the graphic designer plays the role of a banker, a ticket agent and so much more. Whenever there's a thing where you have to make a decision at that split second, talking to someone is a little bit pressurizing. So it's good to like do things on your own time. 68-year-old Amirali Abdili prefers the human touch. As the CEO of a consultancy business, he does use online banking on a daily basis. But he would prefer to talk with service staff rather than a machine. There are instances where self-service technology are not faster. There are still a lot of uh, hiccups that will affect the efficiency of the machine. So I'm challenging Charlotte and Amirali to a test of efficiency. 
they would do battle at Food Joy, one of the nation's first mini-marts to use self-checkout counters back in 2016. You've got your shopping lists. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, so what they are going to do is to go into the mini-mart and pick up identical items, after which you will check out in different queues. What are you choosing? I'm choosing the cashier and the counter. Because of the human touch human and Charlotte. Touch, I'm doing yeah. the self-checkout for do you... ease of convenience. Who do you think will win? Oh, me. me sure. I'm in it down. to win it. Wow. I'm yeah. Glory all over yeah. your face, you see? <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Yes! Very swift, very good. Let's see if everything, Charlotte, you are here too. Oh, okay. Let me just check quickly. Yeah. Okay, all set. Right. Now, if you are ready to go check out, let's go. Sure. Even though there are two people ahead of Amirali at the cashier, he hardly has to wait. And with the help of the cashier, his purchases are run through quickly. Meanwhile, Charlotte is using the machine, but she quickly runs into problems. Uh, I need to help with the uh, credit card, sorry. I'm done. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Mr. Amir Raleigh, so you are the winner. Did you have any doubt that you were going to end up first seeing that oh, she was already checking no out? Because I know checking out is still not so perfect. Charlotte, I noticed that there were some points when you needed help. Yeah. Tell me about those points. Yeah, I think I, I was struggling in the uh, onion department. It was a, a little bit hard to figure out where to, um, how to enter the credit card. Uh, yeah, enter it. Watching you, I totally understand the frustration when you need help and sometimes maybe the help is not at hand. Yeah, yeah. Do you think you'll stick to this mode of self-checkout? Honestly, I think it depends on um, what kind of items I have. So if I had a lot of different bulky items uh, and if I had a lot of like vegetables and things that need scanning, I'll probably go um, with the cashier. But if it's just easy things like uh, a bottle of water, I think it's more convenient for me and also for everyone waiting in line if I just check it out myself. Yeah. Mr. Amir Ali, will you stick to the cashier? Yeah, for the time being, I'll stick to the cashier. So how is it that the self-checkout machine was slower? I'm asking the store's general manager. Mr. Jana, how is it that the self-checkout counter actually took a longer time? It's maybe because of she's new, some of some set fresh items, she's supposed to weigh one. I was observing the customers in your store. I noticed that when they attempt to self-check out, actually your staff need to be on hand to guide them as well. Do you foresee a future where your Minimart will have no human cashiers but only self-checkout counters? Still, we need it. It needs a human touch and needs troubleshoot at least one service staff to do that. Despite Amirali's victory, Food Joy Minimart does believe that self-service is a winner for their business. They say it's led to shorter queues and reduced customer payment time from three to just one minute. Employment of frontline staff has also decreased, resulting in an increased revenue of 10% year-on-year since 2016. Self-service technologies appear to have significant benefits for businesses. But with the nation going full steam ahead with this initiative, are there more sinister done, implications Jamie. for customers? mission to find out if today's self-service technology is benefiting businesses more than the customer. So far, I've discovered that self-service is not always faster compared to someone serving you. So, is self-service technology as seamless as we've been led to believe? I'm about to meet Jamie, Shirley, Maya, Emma and Chris. They can tell me about home loans, phone plans and even flight details. If you haven't guessed it by now, well, I'm meeting chatbots. Chatbots are essentially virtual customer service representatives. 
They've been around for over 50 years. But the advancement of machine learning or artificial intelligence in recent years means they are now everywhere. The whole point of using chatbots is so that you can get the answers that you need immediately instead of trying to reach a service staff. But I've often found that the chatbots don't answer my questions and that's frustrating. Neuroscientist Dr Gemma Kelvert's work helps government agencies and companies understand how consumers receive information so they can predict their behaviour more accurately. Okay, so what are we doing today? Well, today, um, whilst you're going to do a series of tasks, we're going to be measuring some of your physiological responses. So the first thing we're going to do is measure your facial micro-expressions. These are fleeting and tell us how we feel at any point in time. And the next thing I'm going to do is measure your heart rate and pulse through this recording device here. So I'm just going to, if you can just help me pop that onto you and secure it. I'm going to undertake a series so of tasks. Here. First up, phone banking. I have questions about replacing my digital token, and this happens. Our customer service hotline is currently experiencing high call volume. Please I had to input information at various turns. Please enter your phone banking pin, followed by the hash key. Okay. Can I just reach somebody I can you talk may continue to? to hold. It felt like an eternity before I reached another Hello. human being. Okay, so how did that go? Yeah, very good. <laughs> okay. You um, got increasingly frustrated and we saw your heart rate increase and we also saw your sweat levels increasing. Oh, that's you see, when sure. this I goes up. I can feel it. I can feel it. But actually, there's a section here about three quarters of the way through where you start to get really annoyed and you're registering disgust, contempt, anger and surprise every so often. That You're amazed that this can go on for this long. Can you tell from the reading at which point did it peak? Really more towards the end. So as that call went on and on, uh, your expression started to um, shift a bit more from surprise and content to disgust and anger. Was there yeah. any point where that something positive happened? Uh, yes, I think when you smirked, at some point we saw a joy response up here. <laughs> up here. So you can see that. Well, that didn't go too well. On to my next task. I'm now going to speak to government chatbot, Jamie. It's supposed to be a one-stop shop for any questions we might have. First up, find out how much MediShield premiums I'm paying. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know one problem with these chatbots? The font size is really, really small. I think I do need my reading glasses. Chatbots, reading glasses. Let's see what Jamie has said. No matter how many times I rephrase my question, Jamie just keeps giving me the same automated answer. I'm done, Jamie. I'm done. On to my next task. I want to know when my road tax is due. Normally, I'll just wait for a notification letter. This is the first time I'm asking Jamie. Before I've even started, they have already a list of the most popular questions, but my question is not here. Uh, here you go. How can I know when road tax is due? To find out the road tax expiry of your vehicle, please click here and enter your vehicle registration number. Not bad, that's quite helpful. Okay, let's see now. Oh, I got the information that I need. Thanks, Jamie. Good job. The results show that I'm less frustrated with Jamie compared to the previous phone banking system. Both government websites that I went to used the same chatbot, as far as I can see. Why was my experience so different? 
that would really depend on the caliber of the answers that you were um, obtaining. So if you asked something which was a little bit more complicated or that wasn't predicted, uh, then you might not have got uh, such a um, satisfactory answer. Seeing that such self-service technology will only grow more mm. common, so we'll be exposed to it more, what, what kind of impact will that see on us? Hopefully, with the introduction of artificial um, emotional intelligence, or AEI, uh, which builds empathy into these um, automated services, including the chatbots, then perhaps we will see uh, stress levels come down because problems are going to be answered more effectively and, you know, and therefore improve customer experience. Artificial Emotional Intelligence, or AEI, that's when machines can recognize human emotions and respond appropriately. But AEI is still in its infancy. Let's press the purchase button. As developers yes. continue to work on improving right. technology, Smile can companies make the process for customers more pleasing? Yes. At the end of the day, since companies are benefiting more, am I paying less? The answers are very non-specific. It's templated. I'm done, Jamie. I'm done. Self-service technology is meant to Age. increase productivity Matter. amid the growing labour crunch. Off. Yet, is not necessarily uh, faster or easier. And it can get frustrating. Hello. But I'll deal with the frustration if it means that the cost savings from companies are passed down to us. Supermarket giant Fairprice had said in 2014 that cost savings from automation would be passed down to customers in the form of cheaper products and rebates. But NTUC Fairprice is a social enterprise. Are all companies obligated to do so? Professor Kapil Tuli heads the Retail Centre of Excellence. Since 2017, he's been helping retailers raise productivity and innovation levels. He's going to help me break down just how much cost savings I can expect. Hi. Hello, thank you welcome. for your time. Welcome. So today, you'll be showing me how a company can potentially have cost savings from using self-service technology. Yes, Diana. So here's a very simple example of a supermarket checkout company. Now think of this as scenario one, where you have a manual-only checkout operation. You have six lanes, so you have six employees to manage them. Now you transition that into a split. You know, you have three self-service checkout lanes and three employees managing that. Now you start seeing that, okay, in year one, okay, your manpower costs have gone down half, but, you know, these systems uh, which you have to install, let's assume that, you know, it costs you $75,000 for each self-service checkout lane. Now you're looking at an initial investment of $225,000. In year one, you are in investing the in the red, literally in the red, right? What you got to realize is that machine will not cost more in year two and year three. If you say a maintenance cost of, cost of $30,000, $10,000 per machine, that's when you start making the real savings. Net net, in a very simple scenario, not assuming as an inflation, you are actually over a three year period saving $147,000. So I'm really impressed that the companies can actually start seeing savings already in the second year. Do we have concrete data to prove that companies are actually saving this kind of money? Companies are usually very hesitant to share concrete cost saving numbers because it can put pressure on them. Are any of these cost savings being passed on to me as a consumer? We don't know as of today. There is no systematic evidence to the best of my knowledge that these savings are passed on to the consumers. There's no way to tell if businesses are passing on their savings to us and whether we like it or not, automation looks set to stay. Now, I'm going to give you a glimpse of what the future of customer service looks like. Steve Chia is the sales director at LaTeX. His company is developing technology that can read human emotions using facial recognition software. Purchase. Yes. All right, smile under the camera. Seriously? Yep, go ahead. Ha <laughs> ha! Is it detecting my smile? It's... So as long as I smile, even if I'm in a bad mood, I'll be able to get what I want. Yeah, as a matter of fact, in fact, the system goes beyond that. You capture the, the emotions. So for example, even if you are sleepy, 
you the system will recommend you to, to, to get the coffee. What's next? Yeah, so what we just showed you earlier is an emotion uh, capturing, uh, which will be incorporated into the full uh, facial recognition system here. Yep, it's dispensing. Here we go. Cheers, man. Cheers. <laughs> that was incredibly convenient and fast, but I have issues that I would like you to help me to address, okay? Tell me about the technology that's driving all this. There will be the uh, artificial intelligence to allow you to capture things like uh, study the emotions, uh, you know, wh what kind of gender, you know, the person that buy the product and things like that. So you'll be able to recommend, you know, products to, to the consumer. So imagine, Dana, you, you like lipstick, for example. So the, for the future, perhaps once you, you step into the store, camera will capture you and they, the system will, uh, will know you are here and they will recommend the, the lipstick for you. You just go to the, and tell you, and you just go to the shelf, you just take the, the lipstick that you want and you walk out of the store and the bill will be charged to you later. Most companies already know what products you buy from them. They also apply statistics like your age, your typical bill size and what time you shop to segment you into groups for marketing purposes. Now, imagine if they are collecting images of your face or even your mood. Do we have a say in what they are collecting? And can all this data be harnessed to better serve us? To find out, I'm meeting data scientist Dr. Hu Yongli at the home of the nation's first supercomputer. These racks can hold over 13 million gigabytes worth of personal data. So your companies actually have these on their premises. Most of the companies usually have a smaller, probably two to three rack uh, kind of storage. I want to know more, but let's go outside. Yeah, it is. <laughs> let's go. There is so much data collected at various consumer touch points, and businesses are saying that they're doing it uh, to improve my customer experience. Is that true? What really happens behind the scene is able to profile individual customer to drive sales. If you really talk about it, the bottom line has always been to drive a business KPI. So I went to this vending machine that was able to read my expression and then dispense the drink. While it was convenient, I was also a little bit creeped out by the fact that, hey, you know, I'm having a relationship with a vending machine. Are companies aware that consumers like me are, are worried about privacy? Companies are increasingly um, being very cautious when it deals with data. I mean, if you fill out an online form for any promotions or, or credit card applications, it specifically asks you for your consent. Will I ever be sure that my data is secure, 100% secure with anyone? There is always a chance of data being hacked. But I believe when most data are collected, they have a strict protocol of governance surrounding them. So until a time when technology becomes more intuitive and companies start putting customers first, customer service as we have it will be at the mercy of machines.